ship, what up? Leah's back with some more unoriginal content. Hi there. I'm going to continue making videos until I exhaust my collection of meme-tastic Christmas jumpers. Today, we have the Drake meme. So, unoriginal content on this channel continues. Hey. My friend Sophie does a thing on her channel called Book Chat. I'll link her below. Awesome content. Actually original. Go check it out. And as they say, that the best form of flattery is imitation. I kind of thought I'd do something similar and just talk about the books I read in November. Because uh, I did read an interesting collection of things in November. Well, I say interesting. They were all fiction books, but they were all kind of were different from each other. Like, for instance, I read two books that featured Muslim protagonists, but one was a YA book and one was a an adult book. I read two fantasies, one much more child friendly than the other, and I read possibly the greatest feminist YA novel. So, let's go. So firstly, in the month of November, I read the ARC copy of Jasmine Waga. Varga? I'm gonna say Wagas. Here we are now. Uh, Jasmine Waga wrote one of my favourite books of last year, My Heart and Other Black Holes, which was about two kids with depression who meet each other on a suicide pact website and basically plan their suicides, which sounds cheerful, but really it was one of the best depictions of depression in fiction I've come across. I should know, what with having it and all. Uh, maybe I'll make a whole video about books that deal with mental health. Here we are now is the story of Talia, who's a mixed-raced American teenager. Her mother is from Jordan, her father is a white American, and she's never met her dad. She's grown up with a single-parent family and basically is, has been trying to figure out who her dad is, and she thinks it is a rock star from a band her mum won't let her listen to. And it turns out she was right! Right at the beginning of this book, said rock star turns up on Talia's doorstep and is like, hey! I'm your dad, my dad's dying, come and meet him. So Talia, who is someone who has a little bit of social anxiety, which again, dealt with very well in this book, uh, and her best friend Harlow, who is gay, by the way, so ticking all the boxes with diversity here, decide that they will go on a road trip with this man that they have never met, they've only seen on like MTV Cribs, to a random small town to meet his family. So they do. <laughs> And then what follows is basically Talia kind of facing her fears a little bit, like dealing with being on her own. It's an exploration of like friendships and growing up and like growing apart a little bit and also kind of an exploration about like who you are and where you're from and family and that kind of thing. And interwoven with Talia's story is the story of how her parents met and got together and like their relationship as well. I really enjoyed it, so give it a go if you see it. Following on from here we are now, I read The Other Half of Happiness by Aisha Malik, which is the second book in the Sophia Khan series. Um, I read Sophia Khan is Not Obliged last year, absolutely adored it. Basically, I don't, everyone describes it as Muslim Bridget Jones, and I don't want to describe it like that because Sophia Khan and Bridget Jones are obviously very different people. Bridget Jones is a valid work in its own right, so is the Sophia Khan books, but I think that's probably the best way to describe it. The basic plot of Sophia Khan is Not Obliged is that there is a 30-something Muslim woman living in London, she has a Pakistani family, and she is trying to navigate the dating scene. Uh, she works at publishers and she mentions the trials and tribulations of Muslim dating, and the people she works with ask her to write a book about it. So Sophia Khan is not obliged, it's basically told in diary format of Sophia Khan researching for the book that she's writing. So she's going on all these different dates and all of that kind of thing. And it was just, it was great, it was really funny. Being someone that lives in a very white part of the world, it was really interesting to read it and to like, I feel like more people need to read these books and see that people are just people, you know? Anyway. There is a second book in Sophia Khan's life. This is The Other Half of Happiness. And when I saw that this was being released, I was really excited. But then I realised that the covers don't match, which irritates me a little bit. But this basically follows on Sophia's journey after having written that book and experienced 
the trials and tribulations of dating and this is again told in diary format while she writes her second book which is about being married so I didn't realise how much I missed Sophia Khan until I picked this back up and, and had her back in my life. It was just really cool reading two books one after the other that featured people that weren't white. Following on from real life, I read a book that I've been meaning to read forever and that is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. So all of the booktubers pretty much that I watch are Australian and all of them rave about the Never Night Chronicles. So when it was like cheap on the Kindle store, I bought it. I started it and dear god it's the the narration is so weird it's really flowery and like overly descriptive and for a while i was a bit like i don't get it and then once i got used to the writing style i fell and i fell hard <laughs> never night is basically the story of mia corvair whose father is executed for treason and her mother is imprisoned in like the worst prison ever and she ends up in the employ of a chap called mercurio who is a supporter of the Red Church, who basically support the goddess of death, and they raise assassins in a secret school for assassins. Think Hogwarts for assassins. So Mia gets into this school and she's training to be a killer, basically, and her and the ragtag group of other teenage assassins that she meets have to try and graduate ahead of everyone else in their, their their year so it's very good also there was a lot of gratuitous sex and violence and swearing which you don't often find in young adult literature so i was all over that i kind of want to know if anyone else has read never night because it was so unlike anything else i've read and i want to know how other people found the narration and how other people kind of feel about it so yeah if you if you've read never night let me know i have downloaded god's grave which is the sequel and I have so many things on my TBR that like I need to get through them all quickly so I can read God's Grave and find out what happens because I need more trick in my life. <laughs> After the sex and violence and swearing of Nevernight, I turned to another fantasy book, but for it's rated as a young adult, but I feel like it's for children. Undercover Princess by Connie Glynn. I could probably do a whole video on my complicated feelings about YouTuber books because Connie Glynn, aka Nudarella, is a YouTuber, but I genuinely really like this, so... <laughs> Undercover Princess is a fantasy-ish story about a girl called Lottie Pumpkin who has always wanted to be a princess and she loves fairy tales and all of that kind of stuff. Her mum dies and she's being raised by her stepmother in a bakery in Cornwall and she decides that she wants to get into this really exclusive school called Rosewood Hall where like diplomats and stuff send their kids so she works really hard she gets a scholarship where she meets Ellie Wolf who is her roommate only it turns out Ellie Wolf is actually Princess Eleanor Wolfson of a place called Marova is it Marova? Maradova. She's there undercover she doesn't want anyone to know that she's princess she's managed to stay out of the public eye uh, for like 15 years of her life and all she wants is to be a normal teenager, go to a normal school and enjoy life. Only the secret kind of gets out that the Maradovan princess is at Rosewood Hall but people think it's Lottie and not Ellie so they kind of use that to their advantage and this is just their adventures at boarding school basically. I think this is going to be a series and this is book one but oh dear god this is so cute it was really nostalgic. I used to read a lot of boarding school related book series when I was little and um, picking this up kind of reminded me of all of those books and all of like the fun and hijinks that fictional kids got up to while they were at boarding school and so I kind of I did love this a little bit. I don't think that it should be marketed as a YA book though I definitely think this is more sort of mid-grade or like a children's book but everyone likes a nice fairy story now and again so after the end of cover princess I was going to say after the Undercover Chronicles, which sounds like a very different book. <laughs> after I finished Undercover Princess, I moved on to possibly the most feminist YA novel, and that was It Only Happens in the Movies by Holly Bourne. You might have noticed that in my YALC video, I got samples for both of these books, and now I've read the full book, so go me, I suppose. This is Holly Bourne's new book. Holly Bourne... You probably, if you're a reader, know that she wrote the Spinster series, 
which is basically like female empowerment YA novels about like girls helping girls and being awesome and kicking ass and all of that kind of stuff. And this one's no different really, um, we have a female protagonist and she does feminist things. <laughs> but basically, this is a book about a girl called Audrey who is kind of fed up with love, she has a horrible experience with the first boy to ever really like show her attention, her parents are getting divorced, her mum's not taking it very well, so she starts working at a cinema where she meets the ultimate fuckboy Harry. Everyone tells her, don't go anywhere near Harry, Harry is a fuckboy. However, Audrey can't help but be like, he's a fuckboy, but he's hella attractive. Happens to the best of us, Audrey, don't worry about it. However, Harry also thinks that Audrey's kind of attractive, so he flirts with her and she's like, boy, step back, not interested. And he immediately goes, oh, okay, you're not interested, that's fine. And stops flirting with her. Respects her decision and leaves her alone, just treats her like a friend. Which Audrey's then like, oh, I kind of liked the attention a little bit. But you know, she she's, she's a mature, independent woman, so she deals with it. During the course of the book, she starts doing her coursework in media about rom-coms and the unhealthy tropes that you see in rom-coms. So not only is this book the story of Audrey and Harry and like their flirtation and then like, it's not a spoiler because it's on the back, the fact that they like start a little relationship, but it's also an exploration about unhealthy romantic tropes in rom-coms and like each chapter beginning has like a little, let me find one, has like a little trope that you would see in a typical rom-com and kind of points out the stupidity of it as it goes through, which I thought was really interesting and also I've never read a book that does explore some of the more ridiculous things that you see in rom-coms. Like if this was a rom-com, Audrey and like Harry would have changed his ways and he and Audrey would have lived happily ever after, but you know that's not gonna happen because he's just a cheeky laddish chappy and that's not who he is, you know? One thing I did really like about Harry in this book, even though he is like, from the minute we are introduced to him, I'm just like, girl, he is bad news. Like, yeah, he's flirty, he's funny, he's cute. He's just having a good time. The bants are great, but he he is he is not good for you. From the minute we meet him, that's what he's like. But he's also very respectful of Audrey in the kind of build up to their relationship and the and like the majority of the book. She tells him he she's not interested, he backs off. She tells him to stop flirting with her, he backs off. He takes her out on a date and she doesn't enjoy herself and is like, This is a massive cliche, you've done this with every girl and he's like I mean, no, you're right, what do you want me to do? Um, there's a whole bit in here about how Audrey is scared of intimacy because of the horrible experience that she had before and Harry is very understanding of that and very gentle with her and kind of teaches her that like it isn't all about just men having pleasure out of heterosexual relations, like it's for the girl to be pleasured as well and um, that was really refreshing actually because you don't see that in rom-coms or YA books in general. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed this and I think this is probably my favourite Holly Bourne book so far. Do I have anything else to say? Probably not. Go watch Sophie's videos, they're much better than mine. <laughs>